Dave Anderson here, Helicools Helipad. Welcome back to the channel. This is going to be an amazing finish to day number four in Israel. Lots of cool things. Actually going to go to the Wailing Wall first, drop off some of those prayers, do a couple prayers at the Wailing Wall, and then we're going to be heading over to the Southern Excavation and just see some of the amazing, amazing history of the Temple Mount and some of the ruins that are over there and just gather a sense of what it was like back in the day when Jesus walked there. You guys stay tuned. It's going to be some really, really good stuff today. Israel has an extremely old history starting in 3300 BC to when the Romans occupied the land at 63 BC through when Christ was alive onto the current state of Israel born in 1948. Excavations of the exterior of the southern wall of the Temple Mount began in 1968 and were the largest earth-moving archaeological projects in Israel. Work continued until 1978, then resumed again in the 1990s. The southern wall and southern gates are the northernmost extension of the Jerusalem Pilgrim Road leading from the Pool of Shalom to the Temple Mount via the double gates and triple gate. The protrusion of the southern wall, which is seen here, is an addition that revealed two Muslim palaces that were built using cut stones from the Herodian period during the late 7th and 8th centuries when the Dome of the Rock was also built. The western flight of stairs leading to the main entrance of the Temple Mount was 200 feet wide. Excavators uncovered the easternmost part of the staircase with its alternating long and short steps. Some suggest that the 15 long steps may have been one of the locations where pilgrims sang the 15 Psalms of Ascent as they went up to worship. Others suggest that the alternating steps is a matter of a defensive method where the steps could not be easily rushed in the midst of a battle. On these steps that I'm walking on, I'm walking up to the area where it used to be a double exit. There's a triple entrance and a double exit. And these stairs are the very stairs where Jesus would have walked several times. These stairs, the place that I am walking. I'm gonna show you what's left. The double and triple gates provided access to the Temple Mount through subterranean passageways. Half of the lintel stone and revealing arch of this Herodian gateway is visible above the later protruding arch. Above and to the right is a stone with the inscription mentioning Hadrian's son, AD 138. 
Its position upside down clearly indicates that it is of secondary use. The stairs that lead to the double gate are intact and well preserved. The steps that lead to the triple gate were mostly destroyed. I'm going to walk down as far as I can, try to show you the triple entrance. The risers of the steps are low, a mere 7 to 10 inches in height, and each step is between 12 and 35 inches deep, forcing the ascending pilgrims to walk with a stately, deliberate tread. This is the triple entrance. Everybody entered here, except if you had lost someone you're grieving, you actually went into the entered through the double exit which is down in that corner and that way that people could people knew that you were grieving and could offer their condolences as they passed you by Right in the center of your picture, that is called the Mount of Evil Council. And yes, that's a UN building up on top of that. And they actually knew the name of it before they built the UN building up there. The Mount of Evil Council, that's pretty fitting. In the early 21st century, a new bulge was noticed in the southern wall, threatening the structural integrity of the masonry. Unauthorized underground construction of the El Marwani Mosque was cited as the cause. That wailing in the background is a call to prayer. echoes everywhere. A series of public ritual bathing installations were found on the south side of the Temple Mount. Because of the demanding laws regarding purity before entering holy places, demand for mikvah was high and many have been discovered from first century Jerusalem. Some larger ritual baths have divider walls separating the entrance route from the exit. A first century street was uncovered in the mid-1990s that dates to the decades before the city's destruction by the Romans in AD 70. It is 32 feet wide and was paved with large slabs up to a foot thick. The street was covered with massive stones pushed down by the Romans. Only part of the street has been fully cleared by the excavators. On top of the southwest corner of the Temple Mount, bore an inscription which read in part, to the place of trumpeting. The priests would signal the start of Shabbat and several festive days by blowing a shafar from this point. 
The inscription was apparently only a notice to the ancient construction workers as to the final destination of this specially cut stone. Got everybody. <laughs> oh, cool. There's ghosts. There's ghosts. Oh, wow. The remains of this arch, now called Robinson's Arch, is on the southern end of the western retaining wall to the Temple Mount. Evidence shows that the arch had spanned over paved streets at multiple angles. A row of small vaults was also discovered. This row of vaults, together with Robinson's Arch, supported a flight of steps leading from the street to the Temple Mount. Well, this ends day number four in Israel, and I figure I'm somewhere close to maybe 15,000 steps today. So today was a very, very busy day, a very enjoyable day, lots and lots of walking, but sight to be seen, sight to be seen. If this is not on your bucket list, it sure as heck should be. Anyway, we're both beat. I'm gonna sign out. You guys be safe out there. God bless.